Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Refined Horizons, and in this video, I am going to talk to you about how to write notes for a boundary survey map. And this probably will not be the first video uh, that I'm going to do on that topic. I'll probably do a set of videos on the topic, so this will be the first video in this in the set. And the reason I'm doing this now is. We're taking a week or two uh, break at my company uh, to try and get some overdue records of survey filed. And so a lot of those we have 80% or 90% uh, complete, but the, the last 10% or so usually involves uh, wrapping up the notes and preparing the, the submittal package. So. Um, I am usually the person at my company that writes most of the notes for the record survey. I've got a couple of my people that are, are doing some of the notes, but I'm generally doing the bulk of the notes. And I just, I kind of just do that based off experience and kind of uh, rule of thumb. And that's not a super good system. So uh, what I took some time to do this week was come up with some kind of rules of rules of thumb or guidelines for how we structure the notes each each type of note and we've got several types of notes we're going to talk about four types of notes in this video and uh, there's a couple reasons I'm doing that one is I want to make it easier for my survey uh, technicians and my other uh, my other project surveyors to be able to write their own notes using these kind of rules of thumb these guideline guidelines so that's one reason I want it to be easier for them because um, it's a really important part, I think, in, in becoming an excellent boundary surveyor, uh, being able to understand and formulate the notes, write the note content. So that's one reason. Um, the other reason I wanted to do this was it'll also help me be more consistent in the content formatting of my own notes. So that's a positive too, right? So, um, you know, we've been we've been fairly small company for the first two years, and it, the system has kind of worked well, the informal, the informal note system where Landon just sits down and cranks out the notes has worked fairly well uh, but it's it's we're getting bigger and it's not as effective so we, we need a better system so I'm gonna be working the next couple weeks I hope on a on a bunch of record survey stuff we got some new checklists and we're gonna come up with a workflow and we're just gonna try and do do a way better job tighten up this process a little bit and that's really important because like unlike a lot of my competitors we actually file records of survey at my company, so we have roughly somewhere between 10 and 14 maps in process right now in June of 2022. And it's not uncommon for us to be adding somewhere between two and four surveys a month to that tally. So we do a lot. We do a lot of these records of survey. So we're going to talk about uh, notes for a few minutes. Um, and what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to walk you through four kinds of notes that will go on a boundary survey map and then um, I'm actually going to do another video where we go in and we look at a project and we actually write write the notes from the kind of the raw data of the project that the resolved boundary line work and the field notes and some of the record record maps and deeds so we'll, we'll, we'll do that together in a separate training video okay the other thing I wanted to mention right uh, in towards the beginning of the video is I'm trying a new format so um, usually these kind of topical training videos where I don't need to show you something in software I usually do in front of a whiteboard but I want to try something a little bit different in this video so I actually have some slides to show you here with some notes and I'm in front of my my webcam uh, so let me know what you guys think about this um, if, if you guys like this format um, let me know I, I may do more of this we may you know it may help to see some definitions and key points on the screen so if you guys like this format, I'll do more of that, or I can um, I can certainly go back to uh, the whiteboard. Okay, so uh, what are we talking about in in this video? Uh, we are going to talk about four types of notes that go on boundary survey maps. Okay, and when I say boundary survey maps, what do I mean? At my shop at Redefine Horizons. That's going to be a record of survey map, a parcel map, or a land title survey. So those are typically the three products that we're working on. If you work in a different kind of shop, it might be a different kind of product. It could be a record, uh, not a record, uh, sorry, a, uh, a land net, what Caltrans calls a land, a land net. 
some people call it a parcel fabric. Uh, you know, it could be right-of-way mapping, it could be uh, subdivision mapping, or or some people call it track mapping. Uh, but in my in my shop, it'll be these three things. But really, these kind of notes could go on any any type of boundary survey, and, and probably probably should go on um, any type of uh, or most types of boundary surveys. So that's what we're going to talk about. So the four notes that we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about uh, monument notes, property corner notes, uh, adjoiner notes, and boundary resolution notes. And then we've got some other kinds of notes that we'll talk about in some other videos. Okay, so. So why? Why are we talking about this? Why is this important? Why is your boss making you watch this video? Um, so a really important part of what we do at, as boundary surveyors is provide our clients with a map or an exhibit. Okay, so uh, at my shop that could be a land title survey or what we call an existing conditions exhibit. That's what the client gets to see. Um, a lot of times the client isn't actually going to go out and look at the property corners, especially now with the type of work that, that that we do at RH where most of our clients are are not homeowners. We're doing we're doing surveys for businesses. And you know, most of the time that <laughs> you know the CEO of the Fortune five hundred company is not gonna come out and look at the property corners. Um, so most most of what the clients are gonna see is our, our map. Um, now having said that, we also we, we set really nice monuments at my company, so I set General rule: I set two and a half inch aluminum caps or or brass washers. Um, so we set really nice monuments because, again, same principle. That's what the client sees. So the boundary map is what the client sees, and so we want we want to do a good job. We want to strive for excellence there. Um, it's also the case that, uh, especially when we're when we're doing a record survey or a parcel map, that we're communicating with future land surveyors. Right? Could be ten years, fifteen years, twenty years, thirty years, a hundred years down the road. And so we want to do a good job of that communication. That's a service that we're doing to future generations of boundary surveyors. And what we don't want is we don't want somebody to pick up our boundary survey map, whether it's a title officer or a civil engineer or a future surveyor, and we and have to have them guess about how we put the boundary together, how we resolved it. Guessing sucks, right? And I would say on a lot of the maps I pick up, I've got to guess at how the surveyor resolved the boundary. And so we don't want to do that. And so this is part of, like I mentioned before, how part of how we practice what I like to call boundary surveying excellence, right? So my company here at RH, we want to be the very best at what we do, and uh, boundary surveying is a lot of what we do. And good notes are part of how we're the best. Okay, so let's talk about the first kind of notes, monument notes. I'm just going to kind of give you the formula for each of these four types of notes, and then we're going to look at an example of each one. So. A monument note, we've got one of those notes for every monument that we find on the survey. Okay, and in my shop, we, we assign each monument a unique ID. So it usually starts with the letter M, and then it's a three-digit number, 500 series number, M502, as an example. So in the actual monument note, so this isn't the note that goes on the map itself. This is the note that goes on the note sheet under the monument note sections. We're going to have a description of what we found during our survey. There there's going to be the record description in other words what should we have found based on the record we're typically going to use the most recent record description we're going to explain any differences we found between the record and, and what we found on the ground if it's reasonable to give an explanation we are going to very explicitly say whether we accepted or rejected the monument as the corner marker if we reject a monument in other words we say we we did not hold this monument as the location of the corner on the survey we're going to give the reason for the rejection. You don't do that very often. I try really hard not to do that. Um, I certainly don't do it as much as a lot of other surveyors. I do not pin cushion. Um, but in the rare circumstance where I just find a monument that's just too far out and 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 part you know was placed as part of an obvious blunder or mistake, we'll reject that and then we, we need to put a note on the map that explains why we did that. And then we also are going to explain what type of corner it is. You know, is it a quarter corner? Is it the northwest corner of a lot on a subdivision map? Is it a section corner, meander corner, whatever? And then we're going to say, you know, what kind of control does the corner uh, exert? You know, how, how, what, what elements of the, of the boundary that we are surveying does the corner control? Okay, so let's look at an example of what a monument note would read like on one of my surveys. And it, 
and on most of these notes I've, I've, I've adapted and I speak now more in the first person because I just it just makes more sense I'm signing the map so I, I just the notes are easier to read if you just speak in the first person so say I found a one inch iron pipe with no cap or tag okay so that's what we found that's the first element the monument was shown as an iron pipe tagged RCE 20356 on reference 2 so that's what's in the record the second element uh, the pipe was corroded and any tag was likely corroded okay so what I'm explaining there is why maybe I didn't find what was in the record right I found a one inch iron pipe but I didn't find a cap or tag why not it's an old pipe it's it's been through some stuff okay. and I say this monument was set on R2 to mark the northwest corner of lot 12 on R2 okay so now I'm, I'm telling you what type of corner it is and what it controls right it's a corner set on a subdivision map R2 it controls the northwest corner of lot 12 and then I very plainly say it was accepted as the northwest corner of lot 12 on the survey. That's it. There you go. That's a monument note. Okay. All right. So let's do property corner notes. Then I'm going to stop this video and we'll do a, we'll do the last two uh, types of notes in another video just to keep these fairly short. So a property corner note is like a monument note, only a property corner note is uh, for a corner where we don't find a monument. Okay, so the notes are a little bit different, but they both are describing essentially corners in the survey. So in a property corner note, we've got four elements. We've got what the record description was, again, typically the most recent. Uh, then we let people know what was the extent of our search area and the search methods that we used. Do we, do we have any exp explanation for why we potentially didn't find the corner where we expected to find it? And since we didn't find a corner, how did we retrace, since we didn't find a monument, excuse me, how did we retrace that corner on the survey? If we don't have a monument, we had to do something. So what did we do? And then usually that's going to refer to the boundary resolution notes. Okay, so a property corner note goes where we didn't find a monument, um, or there was no monument set. Could be that too. Maybe there was never a monument set. So we need to describe what was there, how hard we looked for for something that was there, and <laughs> how we 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 retraced or res or resolved the location of the corner without a monument. And now I will tell you on a lot of my surveys, even if there is no monument in the record, I will still look for a monument. And especially we do that over in the Bay Area a lot because there's a lot of unfiled surveys there and, and monuments that were set without a survey. Okay, so uh, let's look at an example of what a property corner note looks like. Again, this is a corner in the survey where we did not find a monument. So I said uh, the southwest corner of lot 10 is, sorry, I got an extra T there, is shown as an iron pipe tagged RCE 20. 356 on R2. So that's the record description. That's the first element. After diligent search, no monument was found. The search area radius was 10 feet at the end of an existing chain link fence. There's the second element. How hard did we look? We searched in a 10 foot circle. The search was made with the benefit of a survey grade search coordinate. So now I'm telling you a little bit about the method, right? We had a good survey grade stakeout coordinate. A hole was excavated to a depth of 18 inches at the likely monument location. So we searched a 10 feet circle with the stakeout coordinate. We dug a hole foot and a half deep. We didn't find the monument. Okay, so that's that. That's that next element. They then so if we didn't find the monument, how did we establish the corner? That's the last element. They say see the boundary resolution notes section two for information on how this property corner was established on this survey. Right, fairly simple. Uh, refer to the monument or for the the boundary resolution note uh, to to see how we. Did establish the corner location without a monument okay I'm gonna wrap this first video up there it's about 14 minutes and we're gonna just jump right into the next video and we will go through the next two types of notes